And what's up everybody, and this is Danny, and today I have the NVIDIA Shield, and this is the first quad-core Tegra 4 powered Android gaming system made by the graphics giants NVIDIA. Now, can they compete in the same space as Sony and Nintendo? I've been really eager to get to this thing, so let's go ahead and unbox it and take a look. This is the NVIDIA Shield, and there was a little bit of a delay on the release of this product, but they claimed they wanted to get it perfect because this was going to take Android gaming to the next level. It's powered by their Tegra 4 quad-core processor with 2 gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigs of onboard storage, 720p 5-inch display with Bluetooth, HDMI out, and an SD card expansion for more memory. This beast of a product can be available today in your hands for $299. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open this box. And it has a little sticker that shows you the way that you're supposed to open it in what direction. Two stickers there that you need to cut and go ahead and open the device. But of course, I did not heed that warning, so I ended up opening it up the wrong way. This is the way you're supposed to open it right here. So when you first open the box, you will be greeted with the device. And it has a little bit of a sticker on there that you need to pull back, a little tab. And once you do that, releases the NVIDIA Shield from the little box. And go ahead and take it off the platform. And let's put it to the side. And there's a little package there with the Shield logo on it. And let's see what comes in there. We'll open it up. And it looks like it comes with a few things. It comes with the warranty. And it also comes with this interesting fold-out piece that is huge. And it is a poster, pretty much, showing you all the button layouts and everything that the Shield offers. Of course, it comes with the micro USB cord. And it comes with the NVIDIA branded wall wart, which you just push out right there to plug into the wall. Simple as that. And there's nothing else that comes in a box. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the shield, and this looks largely unchanged from when we saw it at CES early this year. You pop open the clamshell, and you get greeted to the 5 inch display, and let's take that screen protector right off of there. And there's also some plastic guarding the bottom, and you can see that there is some FCC information there, and that's where the battery lies. The Shield essentially looks like a big Xbox 360 controller, but it has some cool accents. Look, it has the NVIDIA logo there with some green accents. Looks very nice. So let's take a look at the hardware. There are dual analog sticks right there. Very nice. And the D-pad on the left-hand side. The traditional four-button layout right there. And you have the Tegra button in the middle, a home, back, volume, and play, pause button. So we'll see what that does when we take a look at the shield a little further. And also you can see that there are dual stereo speakers in the front. So I can't wait to test this thing because they said the speaker is amazing on this. So on top of the clamshell is a removable magnetic plate that you can get different colors in. And on the back you see an HDMI port, micro USB, and there is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a fan and four trigger buttons on the back. So this thing is loaded for gaming. All right, so that's the hardware tour. Let's go ahead and open it and let's boot this thing up and see how fast this thing boots. So you just hold that NVIDIA button there and there is the splash logo, NVIDIA Shield. And let's see how fast this thing boots up from cold start. I'm really interested on how this thing marries Android and you know having this interesting platform on how it works and how it converges with video gaming. Device booted up pretty quickly and you get your typical welcome screen for your Android device and you need to sign in. And I'm all signed in here and let's take a look at the UI a little bit. And if you use the directional pad on this, you can see you just click through the different icons and different apps. And if you use the analog stick, there is a mouse pointer there. So this might be more interesting for when you HDMI out to another screen. This might be a little bit more helpful. I'm not sure. So I'll let you know in the full review. On initial impression, this device feels very solid and it's built very well. And it's really heavy though. It's bulky, but it feels good in the hand, very secure. And the screen folds back all the way so you can get that proper viewing angle that you need for your games. 
So how does this thing size up with the 3DS XL and the PlayStation Vita? Let's go ahead and take a look real quick. And no doubt the shield is a monster. It is really big. You can see how it just bulks over the 3DS XL without an issue and the XL is much thinner when the shell is closed. Now the Vita is not a clamshell device so it's a little bit different but it's also competing in the same space because it's got a 5 inch HD screen and a quad core processor but let's see how they differentiate. The Vita is much thinner and you can see that it just basically is paper thin compared to it but the buttons are also smaller on the Vita and the buttons are just bigger all around on the shield and I think that makes for a more comfortable gameplay situation. And here is the Ouya controller just thrown in for good measure and it's bigger than the Ouya controller as well. So Android users will definitely find this familiar for you just swipe to the right and you'll get to your settings and quick toggles. And there are some cool things here. Mirror cast. Um, there's other things involved here too. There's a controller setting where you can mess with the pointer speed and LED brightness and everything like that and control your pulse LED light. And also there is HDMI settings and I found something pretty interesting in the display setting as well that when you hit display that you get some color correction presets so that's pretty cool you can pick between srgb and native but this is a relatively stock build of android and if we hit about shield we will see that it's running android 4.2.1 so hopefully this thing will get updated to android 4.3 very soon for the gpu improvements so if you're like me you probably want to know how this tegra 4 performs so of course I had to put some benchmarking tools on here. So let's go ahead and run Quadrant real quick. And see the problem is, is that this thing running in portrait is just kind of terrible. It's just, since most apps are still running for mobile and designed for mobile phones, some of these things are gonna run in portrait orientation. So 15,000 on Quadrant and not bad since the Galaxy S4 does about 12,000 or so but I had to run Antutu Benchmark and when I got the score I almost went Ric Flair on it. Man this is the highest Antutu score I've ever seen. So of course it's running Android you can watch videos on it but what about these stereo speakers on the front? Let's take a listen to these things. Move over iPad mini. The new king of the budget tablet is here in a 7 inch form factor and this is the new Google Nexus 7. Trust me, I don't think it does it justice. It's very loud and typing on this is kind of awkward but the hinge is strong enough for it to take inputs and it also does web browsing very fast on initial impression. Really smooth scrolling. Of course, Google now is on board as well. So without further ado, let's just go right into the gameplay. This is one of the two preloaded games that comes with it, Expendable Rearm. So let's take a look at this video game and see what comes with it. I've never played this game before, but it shows you how to play it. And just playing this really quickly, it runs very well. Frame rates are extremely smooth on this. And let me tell you, just holding this gamepad, it's really nice. Uh, playing this video game on here. The analog controls are very comfortable and the screen is very nice by the way. Good color replication. It looks extremely good so I can't wait to play more video games on this. I'll do a separate video game play video for the Nvidia Shield. Once again the screen is very vibrant, very bright and you can see that the frame rates are extremely good on this so this game looks fun, I can't wait to play it a little bit more. So the other game that comes with it is Sonic the Hedgehog 4 THD. Sega! And the classic Sega boot up there. And there's Sonic the Hedgehog 4. And let's go ahead and play this game. I'm pretty sure a lot of people are familiar with it. I have this on some of my other devices as well, but I'm kind of curious on how it works with the Nvidia game controller here on the shield and if it's any more comfortable. So let's take a look at the gameplay on this. All right, so Sonic is all fired up and let's go ahead and start moving here with the analog stick and we're getting moving quickly here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this gameplay go on and you can just enjoy the game footage and we'll be right back. Wow, it runs buttery smooth on this Tegra 4 processor, and it should. It's one of the most powerful mobile processors out there. So for $299, this thing packs a pretty big package, and seems good so far. And just the way it feels in the hand, let me just reiterate, it feels good. It is bulky, it is heavy, but the way that this thing is designed ergonomically, it's got these dips in the back, and it just fits your fingers just perfect. And I find that for my hand size, this thing is great. So what do you guys think about the NVIDIA Shield? Do you guys already own a Vita or a 3DS XL? And would you consider buying this product since it's running Android and it's not your traditional gaming system? What do you guys think? I think this is a pretty cool device and shows the diversity of Android. Or would you rather save money and just get a MOGA controller like this and hook it up to your current smartphone that you have right now? Let me know in the comments below and let me know what you want to see in the full review for I'm excited to play with this and I will definitely dive into it a little bit further. And since I have unveiled the shield, there's going to be a lot more coverage on my channel. So please subscribe to the channel and don't miss another video and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Follow me on Twitter at Super Scientific and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.